Hello everyone, Storm Nolan here. Today we'll be having a quick update on the severe weather setup. Tomorrow, there's two different areas to watch. You got one up in the parts of the Ohio Valley, and there's another area to watch across parts of Georgia and the parts of the Carolinas as well. Before we get started in this video, if you guys would like weather related content, you can subscribe to my channel. We'll, we do this stuff here all the time on this channel. We may have, we might have one, one more update on the severe weather setup tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, how things do go tomorrow. If there's a major change tomorrow, I'll let you guys uh, know about that as well. But let's get started with the watch warning advisory display. And things have been pretty active across the several planes here. Uh, but generally, look, most of the QS, it's quiet pretty much. But then again, it's been very active across parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama. Uh, not so much in Tennessee so far, but it's, most of your activity has been in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And the severe weather risk will continue into the overnight hours, but it won't be as bad if the way it's been earlier. But there is a tornado watch for parts of southern Mississippi, far southeastern tip of Louisiana as well. And I think a couple counties in the western panhandle of Florida as well. Let's check out the storm reports from yesterday, and we do expect these numbers to continue to rise here over the next couple of days. Some damage surveys are going to take some time here. And I do think uh, yesterday, I don't know if I showed the storm reports or not yesterday, but anyway, I think the time I made the video, maybe somewhere between 10 to 20 tornado reports, and now we're up to 36. So that's a big jump. Uh, wind report 62, and also 32 hail reports. Only one significant hail report which is pretty interesting as well. And expect some of these numbers here to increase over the next couple of days, mostly the tornado reports. So the damage surveys are likely going to take quite a bit of time. Even for today, it's been pretty bad as well. This has been reports so far. And I'm saying so far, we expect these numbers to increase over the next couple of days as well. So far we had 30 tornado reports, 46 wind reports, and only five hail reports as well. And then again, don't be surprised if your tornado reports do increase over the next several days as well. It could be certainly on the higher end, but certainly this tornado outbreak has continued into today. And it's still technically going out there as well, where we do have a couple tornado warnings out there as well and also unfortunately the eastern part of new orleans did get hit by potentially a strong tornado then again for parts of the eastern new orleans area so hopefully everybody's okay out there but regardless then again today was certainly a another tornado outbreak out there this is the store prediction outlook for the rest of tonight there is an enhanced risk for far southeastern uh, Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and it does extend to the parts of southwestern Alabama as well. There's a small 10% tornado risk out there, but then again, it's very tiny in southwestern uh, Alabama. Damage winds looks to be the primary threat. There may be some hail out there as well. I don't think hail is going to be a big deal out there. But this is tomorrow. We got two different areas to watch for. There's a slight risk for parts of Indiana and Ohio. And there's another slight risk from the Panhandle of Florida all the way up into parts of North Carolina as well. And we'll talk about a little bit more about the setup here a little bit later in the video. But let's talk about the current environment out there as of right now. And you can see here, this is surface space Cape. There's still a decent amount of instability out there in southern Mississippi, southwestern Alabama, even the far western part of the Florida Panhandle as well, where we do have some areas getting between 1,000 to 1,500 joules per kilogram. But really the main area to pay attention to is the mixed layer Cape. And you can see here, it's much more expansive. Uh, the 500 joules per kilogram pretty much includes mostly all of southwestern Alabama, southern Mississippi, and the far eastern part of Louisiana as well. And there's still areas with 1,000 to close to 2,000 joules per kilogram of mixed layer Cape out there. And that will still be favorable for some severe weather out there as well. Lap rates have been on the weaker side, and that has led to some uh, 
unor a, quite a bit of unorganized convection. But like I said yesterday, even though we'll see some unorganized convection, there can still be storms out there that can get organized out there and can do some bad things, which is, that's exactly what happened today. Plus, we still had that big-time squall line that rode through parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and it's now in the parts of Alabama currently. That's also produced damaged winds and even tornadoes as well, even with the squall line by itself. And that's to be expected. Low of lap rates has also been very weak as well. Um, storm energy with velocity is on the higher end currently between 300 to 500 so it's certainly pretty high not as high as yesterday which is a good thing but then again there's this is still favorable for uh severe weather as well and uh, if we check out the significant square parameters the bullseye currently the potential for strong tornadoes is for right now looking to be in southern mississippi in the and far southwestern Alabama as well. Anytime when you have at least a one conditions could be favorable for tornadoes. Even in a 0 0.5 as well, uh, a lower end risk uh, for tornadoes, but it's pretty limited. But it's really the two and three zone you got to pay attention to. And these areas here haven't worked up that much. So fortunately, the severe weather threat is not over yet. And if you do live in these areas of here, definitely have to be what are where through the night in these areas in here as well because we still got thunderstorms out in the gulf of mexico training over some of the same areas at the same time they're slowly moving the, to the east but the good news is is that these instability values will be backing off as we get deeper to the overnight hours which is good news they are becomes a little bit more stable and the storms do not become as organized as well as we get deeper to the overnight hours Surface composite numbers are pretty high, high as a 12 in some places out there. And uh, here's a large hail parameter. Numbers are not really elevated out there. And I think that's pretty much it from here. So let's check out the latest herd model run and see how it wants to show with these storms here. You can see here. As your big squall line does continue to push further to the east, there might still be damage with winds and maybe even a couple QLCS tornadoes out there within that squall line as well. But this area down here, southern Mississippi, far southwest Alabama, and maybe the far western tip of the panhandle of Florida, uh, may still see the potential for supercells over the next couple of hours until really at some point all these here should begin to cluster up or widespread convection develops and things become more stabilized very quickly and you can see how this potential severe weather risk does continue into the overnight hours into the early morning hours as well if we move this thing here here out of the way getting into uh wednesday here there's a lot of unorganized convection out there Wednesday. Now, if this does occur, the setup may not be that bad. It really wouldn't be. Similar situation of what we've been talking about with the setup today over the last several days here, but it's likely not going to be as bad as this, of course. But it's that similar type of situation where your bus potential will be widespread on unorganized convection. Not much of anything happens. Or if it's boom, there's less convection out there. You get a more unstable atmosphere. That could lead to a better opportunity for severe weather. That's the situation we're kind of seeing here uh, for tomorrow across parts of the Carolinas, even down to parts of Georgia and northern Florida as well. There's going to be plenty of wind shear out there, but the instability is the big question out there. Will there be enough instability to get strong, severe storms going? And then again, as I'm kind of playing this back and forth here, you can see here, there's a couple of organized storms out there, but generally most of the storms out there are disorganized as well, which can keep the atmosphere a little bit more stable. Here's the significant toy parameters from the HER model. You can see here some of those elevated numbers out there over the next couple hours, but those numbers will really begin to back off as you get deeper to the overnight hours and eventually to Wednesday morning. You can see here these numbers do come back up into Wednesday and really as you can see here there are some high numbers out there but they're very isolated those would be contaminated sound leaks here but generally as a whole 
when it comes to significant wear parameters, the conditions are not very favorable out there if you have widespread convection. If there's more instability out there, conditions could be much more favorable for severe weather out there as well. But if we do get a sounding out there, if we go to, uh, let's go to the western part of South Carolina, and you can see here, a uh, very flat holograph that will limit the tornado potential. But there's also a decent elven mix layer here in two different parts here. You got one in between 300 500 millibars, and there's another one between 700 to 850 millibars. If this here trends stronger, there may be a chance for a little cap here as well. You can see where that red line does get pretty close to that white dotted line right there. But either way, there's not a cap there, but there's a possible indication of that. So we move further to the east where the environment could be a little bit more favorable. You can see here, this is a little bit of a contaminated sounding here, but this is really kind of the most realistic sounding I can kind of find here. Uh, decent amount of wind shear to work with, some instability going on out there as well. But you also need to notice here, uh, for the potential for widespread convection, you got a very saturated column here, uh, where the green line is close to the dew point line, as you can see there. And that could be an indication for well, not only for very efficient rainfall producers, but it can also be an indication that there may be potential for widespread convection out there as well. Especially there will be a decent amount of lift out there as well. You can see how the severe weather threat does back off. And there is a march risk for parts of the East Coast as well, from Virginia down to parts of Florida as well on Thursday. As well, it's something I forgot to show on day three from the Store Prediction Center. Now just remembered. The secondary area will be in parts of Ohio, West Virginia, and even for parts of Kentucky. Now, I know parts of Indiana is a slight risk, but it doesn't seem to be that way. It really hasn't been that much in a way like that over the last several runs. Her model does indicate some decent storms in the north, at least in the northeastern part of Indiana. There's also some storms back here a little bit far off to the west. Those may have the potential to have a little bit of spin as well, but I don't think it's going to be as great of what could happen in this area right in here, which this has been the main area to focus over the last couple of days as well, especially with the NAM family. NAM family has been very consistent kind of along the Ohio-West Virginia border, even maybe as far southwest as northeastern Kentucky and maybe as far northeast as parts of southwestern Pennsylvania as well. And really the herd model has been kind of going around when it comes to reflectivity, but its latest run with the zero Z here kind of falls along similar to the to the NAM family, which I know those models do terrible with with, with reflectivity. The herd model does have a little better handle. But to see something like this, this will be a very concerning signal here. Which, what the herd model is showing here is some supercells out there that could have the potential to produce uh, damage winds, maybe some hail, and maybe that isolated tornado risk out there as well. And you can see there are more storms also form later in the day as well. So, that would not be a good look right there if the herd model would, were to be correct. And this is your significant tour parameters. You can see there are some pretty decent numbers out there. If we get a sounding out there to see what the Hermal suggests, and you can see here, this is a pretty good sounding here. Sorting with Hussey values generally uh, 250 to maybe as, up as high as 400. Lap rates slightly on the weaker side, but it's not terrible. Dew point right around 62. There's actually some areas where the Elvin mix layer is a little bit stronger as well, so that's something to take note of as well, which can lead to a more discrete mode when it comes to thunderstorm development as well. You also got a really nice holograph out there as well. So really, given by this sounding here, conditions could be favorable for damaged winds and maybe isolated tornadoes as well. I don't really think there's a strong tornado threat with this, at least for now. But it's definitely something to keep an eye on, especially if how malls have been pretty consistent with this uh, as well. So if you do live in the parts of southeastern Ohio, maybe in the parts of northeastern Kentucky, and parts of the northwestern part of West Virginia, and maybe in the parts of southwestern Pennsylvania, definitely have to stay wet or aware uh, tomorrow in those areas in there, which I know from the Storm Prediction Center, some of you guys are not in the slight risk. And I've said that yesterday, 
that's these areas here should be in the cycles here for the last day or two so they may do it tomorrow we'll have to wait and see you also do notice here that the her model is also indicating some elevated significatory parameters on the other side of the state as well but then again at the same time the numbers are not really that high up there as well if we do get a sounding up there on the other side of the state you're really lacking on the wind shear up there, but there is a decent amount of instability to work with. This type of environment could be favorable for some gusty winds out there. There is strong low lap rates in this area. There's also a decent elevated mix layer, so that can also lead to a potential hail threat. But with the weak wind shear here, you're not going to see much in the way of organized storms here. If the Herma were to be correct on the sound here, there's not a tornado threat here in that part of the state. But it could change keep in mind that but really for wednesday here this will be an area i will focus on uh, pretty closely here and here's the high risk nam here and like i said here earlier it's been pretty consistent here and it's also showing some similar numbers out there as well which if we do get a sounding out there really quick you can see here it's got a little bit of a stronger elevated mix layer out there which can lead to a more discrete mode out there as well which is actually pretty wild with the dew point line out there um, as well decent amount of wind shear one problem here is that there's not a whole lot of wind direction of height there that's something to note as well there's not a whole lot of wind direction of height going on here as well which may which can help limit the tornado potential but i still think regardless here i think there's still at least a tornado risk out there as well and even with that i think we can still see some organized storms as well if it does become more directional here, I think damage winds could still be a threat with so many storms as well. So that's also another thing to know as well. Also, CAPE. Surface-based CAPE is almost to 2,000. That's pretty high for those areas for this time of year. Uh, and also, then again, lap rates there, especially in the low levels, is on the strong side as well. So really, overall, tomorrow here... Um, Really, for parts of Ohio, West Virginia, maybe in the parts of Kentucky, and perhaps southwest of Pennsylvania, uh, these are definitely areas to watch here on Wednesday as well. And honestly, this looks better than what could be going on down here as well. But then again, there's also some uncertainty down here as well. It kind of depends on if this is if if we're going to see a messy mode down there or not as well. But anyways, guys, that's all for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you do like my channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you never miss an upload. If you guys have questions about this, put the comment section down below. Alright, if you guys have questions, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye and have a good day.